Star Wars, maybe we'll do that in like 20 hours of play. Yeah. I was, I, caught, I was hoping I was going to have uh, some of the actual designs to share, but um, all the work I did last week in the factory were not quite at the point yet to right. share and say, hey, here's some awesome new Car Wars designs. I'd say there's dozens of new Car Wars minis coming out, um, and the game is, and the game. <laughs> I guess we're doing this already then, aren't we? Are you recording? I don't know. Yeah, we're recording, but okay. hey, we'll, we'll, awesome. just, we'll just start. Well, anyway, I'll uh, talk about Car Wars since we're talking anyway. Cool. So, I spent last... Hi! I spent last week uh, working with our factory rep on uh, both Car Wars and Ogre and Lunch of the Clumps card game. Both, but anyway, all three. And for Car Wars, what's happening is there are three starter games. There's an probably $80, we're still nailing that down, four-player box set, big box, that has eight plastic minis in it, and everything four players need to play. This includes everything you need for vehicle design, combat, it's all in the box. And then there are two two-player starters. There is Marino's starter for sleep, like very fancy, futuristic cars, and the Wasteland starter, which is like outside of the cities where it's all crumbling, cars are cobbled together. And the thing is, the two different two-player starters, the arena set, the cars, the, the player colors are black and white. The wasteland sets, the colors are orange and purple. And then the big four-player set has red, yellow, green, and blue. So if you want, you can buy the two different two-player starters and have four players. You can buy the two-player and four-player and six players. Or you can buy all three and have an eight-player game. That's a good layout. After that, the colors aren't just the player color, they are the factions within the game. Oh. So, you may have selected the white arena sets, you got these fancy, really fast cars with lasers, reflective armor, they're all sleek and shiny, but then there's also faction boxes. So you may want to buy the white player set or black player set faction box to go with your starter, and now you've got three more minis go with that, all for that faction, including all the new weapon cards, gadgets, gear, stuff like that. Um, another good example is the basic games, the cards can go up to a speed 5, but then some of the faction sets have like interceptors or speedsters, uh. where they've got higher speed, uh, faster engines, so you might have a speed 6 or a speed 7 up to speed 9 car, and that's all built out. And the way gameplay works is, for example, when somebody's shooting at me, I get a defense roll and the number of dice is equal to my speed. So if I'm going really fast, I get to roll a lot of dice. But the basic game only has five of the dice that you need. But in the expansions where you can go faster, we also give you the extra dice that you need. But maneuvering is, um, the old game had the difficulty hazards, so it's D1, D2, things like that. The new one has something similar to that, except there's uh, more extreme ranges happening and maneuvers. So you might do a very shallow one die maneuver, which is you're going to roll one die plus your speed dice, and you don't want to get skids. Skid results are bad. But maybe I'm going to do a uh, three turn, and that gets into the red range. So I'm going to roll two normal dice and then one of the bad red dice, which it's a little more dangerous when you get there. That's how and, I drive. That's how I drive in Austin. Um, and then different drivers have different skills that can reduce skids. There's gunners that can bonus dice to attack. There's uh, accessories that can be re-rolls. So it's like, miss! Nope, nope. I got a targeting computer that can re-roll these two dice and hits. Um, vehicle design is very important. It's in there. The rules include like pre-designed vehicles in case you just want to open the box and play. But if you want to get into the vehicle design system, it's 10 to 15 minutes after you open the box. Everybody's designed their cars and now you're ready to fight. Every faction set comes with more gadgets and more options. Um, there's also single mini packs coming out. There are dozens of car wars minis coming up in HO scan. So, oh wow. Yeah. They're nice, uh, about two inch average. So you can play a model train table, people. Yes, you can fight on your model train. 
That is wicked, actually. <laughs> this four by eight table is nice. Well, the thing is, the game's designed around a three by three play space for basic arena games. And one of the uh, expansions coming out after the game launch is an arena play map that has uh, three dimensional towers and walls, and you can reconfigure it and make your own arenas. We have play mats coming out for highways, highway curves, off road action. And we took everything we loved about the original Marvel's game and just tried to make it for today. Because it's going to be a lot harder to convince someone to pull out their calculator and spreadsheets today and design a car. Especially this guy. Oh, yeah. I'm, I mean, I'm stupid. So I need a nice and simple. And this is, we say, we're going to play a Vision 5 game. So we each get five gold points. We pull out the cards, and I'm going to get a machine gun for one gold point. I'm going to get a computer for a gold point. I'm going to get some extra armor. Maybe I'm going to be able to guard my car, and I'm done. I'm ready to go. Five is like super low. It's a good introductory point. You can do 10, 15, 20 point builds. And then you're starting to get into turrets, you get lasers, you get ramp plates. Everything is designed so you can customize your car as much as you like. But not spend a lot of time doing it. We want to be playing the game. We want to be like 10 minutes in, I'm shooting because that's where the fun is. Or I'm ramming you because that's really cool. That's where it belongs. Yes. This from the guy who wasn't going to talk about Car Wars. Yes, we're not talking about Car Wars today, I swear. I got nothing to say about nothing Car Wars. Nothing to say. It's all secret. I'm not going to talk about the Kickstarter project in November or the new Car Wars fiction anthology that includes game cards. We're not. We're not oh. talking about any of that. Well, he will, on top of that, the anthology that he's doing, he wants to pick your path adventures. I would love that. But I'd like that for lunch. Oh, that's right. That, was that, would, be, that would be totally awesome. Yes. The program, the lunch room books. Uh, in terms of page, I think dying to the comparison. I've never heard of one. I'm, I'm seriously toying with the idea. <laughs> uh, Steve actually wrote years ago kind of a how-to for writing that type of book. Really? Yeah, it's very interesting. Where, where's the title? An issue of Audible Quarterly, and if I was smarter, I could tell you exactly what it is, which issue it is. I've already said I'm kind of stupid. So, it's out fair. there, somewhere. I'll try uh, it. But anyway, I got totally distracted from talking about brand the new stuff that he wants games. to talk about. So, we have Batman the Animated Series Dice Game. Which um, we are demoing in the booth, and you are welcome to go demo it at the end of time. So what happens is there are four different characters in the game. You are playing super villains trying to pull off heist, and Batman's trying to stop you. Because it's what Batman has done. Yeah. Thanks, Batman. So they turn him into a villain. Uh, this will be out in November. It's uh, $14.95, and it's about... 20 minutes of play, uh, two to four players. There is a promo card floating around for the game that will let you have a fifth player, Mr. Freeze. But I don't have any with me right now, or else I'm happy to give you one. That's fair. Um, right now at the show, we have Will and Ted's excellent board game. Completely new. Illustrated by Lynn Peralta. So this game's a brain burner. It's a program movement game where you're planning in advance where you're going to go and you're taking your time machine through the circuits of time in order to find historical figures. And every time you find one of these historical figures, you shove them in your time machine, but unfortunately, the more of these you shove in, the wonkier and crazier your time machine gets. It's harder to control it. So I definitely recommend that you um, check our website. We've got a video up on how to play it. Or you should definitely uh, stick your head outside and just take a shot at it. I keep losing because I keep forgetting my left from my right sometimes. And I don't typically do that. But this game, it gets so chaotic and crazy and everybody's going at it. And all it takes is like one mistake. You're like, no, I said turn left. And they're like, that is left. You're like, oh, no. Because you know now every decision you've made after that point 
you're backwards. You're like 180 degrees off, and it's hilarious. Wow. Yeah, it's really, really fun. Um, also new right now at the show is the Simon's Cat Card Game. We played this in Origins. Meow. Yeah, we played this in Origins. <laughs> oh, did you post the video? Yeah. So they should go back and watch the video. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Simon's Cat. Um, it's in stores right now. It's totally available. Something that is not available and we haven't really talked a lot about is Ghost Love Candy, which was a Kickstarter project. Um, there were some issues, the game hadn't been delivered, and we looked at it and said this game is adorable. Played it and said this game is really fun. So we worked out a deal with the designer to bring the game. It will ship to stores next year, but we have everything lined up so that later this year when we actually take delivery of the game, we will fulfill the Kickstarter project and ship the game out to the 380-ish, 400 factors if you can get it. Uh, we just want to. I mean, it's a cool game, we found it, and we can look at it as a research cost or a marketing cost. And it's worth it to us to get these games out there, let everybody start playing it. But we didn't want to ship a game that's very Halloween theme in November or so, so it's better just to save it for next year. And now we have less work to do next year to get that game to break because it's done. It's in our warehouse, all set to go for Halloween. Um, we've got I Hate Zombies here at the show, which we did a crash course of this at Origins as well. <laughs> this game. Sounds like a lot of fun. It's really silly. It was uh, produced by Working Geek initially. It's a Kevin Wilson design. They had run a Kickstarter project for it. And after they released the game, they came to us and said, Hey, we think it's a really fun game. Would you take a look at it and maybe do a wider distribution? We opened it all over and said, Yes, this is adorable. They had done a little like CD card sleeve package, which doesn't really work at uh, retail hobby stores, mass market, anything like that. So we did a box, um, we did some quite slight uh, tweaks in the rules, little pre-writes, little clarifications, some editing, and it's available right now. Brand new. Uh, also available right now is Ogre Objective 218. Another crash course game. You played this one too? All right. I don't know. See, you guys don't we, we didn't play a full game, but enough. Rhea's on top of it. Rhea's so much better at this than I am. But that's the trick. In my position, you want to hire people smarter than you and let them do the work. Yep. And you just go, that's what I need to do. <laughs> yeah, but see, the challenge is you have to try and find somebody smarter than you. For, for that, me, that's, that's easy. Not hard. We got like 40 something people in the building smarter than me, so that's not hard at all. Um, in January, we have Over 6 Edition coming up. Really? Yeah, it's going to be on pointing down. Ogre 6 edition. How's this going to be different from the one you just released? Um, it's smaller. That's always a good thing. It's it makes manageable, you can carry it. It makes so shipping easier. It makes it profitable. So the Ogre Designers Edition was Steve's giant love letter to Ogre and wanted to thank everybody who supported him for the last 40 years. And it had Ogre, GV, and a ton of stuff inside the box. And it was just, I mean, it's 28 pounds of game, 27 pounds, it's a lot of game. This is the original Ogre game at that same scale, but at a more realistic size. We carry this box. Following this, we have an expansion coming up for it, and we're working on plastic Ogre minis to go along with it. And we expect this in January, and then the expansion of minis to follow within more than eight months. The minis are the real question there because we're yeah, just now sense. starting to work on adapting the old metal minis to the necessary file structure so that we can do the plastic uh, minis. And that sometimes is a challenge I've learned. Yes, it's very much a challenge. Um, something we have up here that we haven't really talked about a lot is the new arcade machine dice tower. It's a prototype. Yes, this is. Uh, about 10 inches tall, and it is a dice tower. Dice go in the top, dice come out the bottom. There's a trigger plate in the bottom where the dice hit. Really? Yeah. Uh, 
going on. See? Very and cool. It kind of bounced. It's great. What happens in the final, in the factory spooling up, this was the original hand sample in order to say, yes, the design works, yes, we can put the dice through it, we can do up to 19 computer dice through this, but the next sample we get has the printed screen and the LED effects inside the cabinet. So when you drop your dice in, it hits the plate, it triggers the LEDs. We're having a lot of fun. It's a video game. It really is. It's an arcade machine. It's, it's gonna awesome. light up. And uh, we decorated it all up with Munchkin because that's a nice, uh, really cool thing that we own that we can show. And it doesn't require that we start talking about all the different licenses that go along with this. Or uh, that's fair. We can't talk about it, but there's some really cool stuff in the works. But um, <laughs> this is uh, going to $29.95. It's reasonable. It's, and it's huge. I mean, that's the thing. Is yeah, when, it is huge. When we spec'd it out, we're like, well, you know what should be 10 inches tall? Because that'll have a nice feel half to it. And then the sample shows up, and we're like, oh, yeah, 10 inches is a lot, isn't it? This is great. And we were worried we were going to have to go like 40 bucks or something on it at retail, but we managed to get everything worked out under 30. So I'm super happy about that. Something else. Let's see, what else? I think that pretty much covers it right now. I haven't talked about Munchkin with you. Lots of Munchkin. Lots of Munchkin. I don't think he told you about the really cool Munchkin stuff that you have because it's super cool. No, he did We're working with our partners. I didn't really have one, no. Oh, well, he did talk a little bit about Marvel. Yes. And Marvel, Marvel 2, Marvel 3, and we can't talk about what But now I know there's something else with USA Opley coming out, so... Yeah, uh, I'll go. I'll go bribe Ross with a beer. <laughs> Ross knows not to talk. I'll drop. I'll drop three beers. <laughs> Ross. Ross is good. I trust him. You should. I don't know. And that's that's it. That's what we're doing. That was a. Uh, that's not talking about Star Wars. So now that we're at the end of the interview, hi guys, Matt Lucky with your gamer goggles. <laughs> <laughs> Phil and I always do this when we interview. We just kind of start talking and it ends up into the interview. Yeah, hey, Celia, look at that. Look at it. Look back your water. So, how are you enjoying your Gen Con so far? I'm, I'm well hydrated. <laughs> Fantastic. So, but it's good. Uh, that means you're going to do another Kickstarter project. Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm doing season six probably in October. Fantastic. Uh, and you've already proven that having a camelback is really important at a convention. It's super important. So I'm willing to bet that means you're already researching a custom printed camelback that you can make as a reward. No, not yet. Aww. Those Aww. kind of those kind of rewards are really expensive. Yeah, they are. I'm actually toying with the idea of creating a play while you wait card game. Okay. Um, and then getting it printed. That I just got to do some more research on printing it, or having somebody else print it for me. It's going to be nine cards, and it'll have. A custom badge holder. Nice. Very Because nice. that way you got to have a place to put the game. Right. right? And uh, I'm probably going to write a Pathfinder adventure. Oh, awesome. Because I've always felt that my Kickstarters have been heavy rewards towards like producers and sponsors. Right. And not so much people that just watch the content. Okay. So that's how I'm doing. So what about uh, maybe some exclusive bonus interviews and things like that? Supporters. And you can even post it to the Kickstarter as a backer update, backers only, because you've got a delivery mechanism there. No, I haven't thought about it. It depends on how you... I, what I, my goal is to be able to come to the shows and post that night. Okay. That is almost impossible with hotel internet. Yeah. You it's, know, I can maybe do like a Facebook update or a Kickstarter update that's just for Kickstarter backers right. type of thing. But to it, even that, you got to sit down for 15 minutes video. Um, See, the, the problem is you're staying too close to the convention. You need to drive three hours away so you can get outside of the convention blast zone and find some faster Wi-Fi. Yeah, and then or or I just need to do like 4G on my own. Do a hotspot. Oh, I don't know. I got one of those in the team. It's not working here. Everybody's overwhelming the network here. Oh. Yeah, it's crazy. I've never had a problem. Welcome to Gen Con. We don't have Wi-Fi. Yeah, so that, that is the big problem with it. And I've thought about like doing exclusive interviews, but then I feel like I'm like I don't know. Well it doesn't it doesn't have to be the entire 
interview is exclusive, but if you structure it so that um, you sit down, you talk about all the stuff, and it's, hey, thanks, check back later, and then, oh, you're still here, you're clearly a backer, you're one of the supporters. We can do that. to talk about a really secret new thing, like, uh, Okay. Okay. All right. Anything else? I don't think so, man. Thanks. Thank you so much. Good luck with it. Thank you, guys.